Welcome to or welcome back to Wrong Sports. And if you are a football fan and a historian, and if you are watching this channel, then you probably are, then you definitely know the name of Sid Gilman. Gilman was a professional football coach in the AFL and NFL for over two decades. He's won 122 games. He won the AFL title in 1963. And before that, he was also a college football coach at Miami of Ohio, as well as Cincinnati, where he created his futuristic offense and won 80% of his games across 10 seasons. But there was also a rather short and forgotten history where he went back to college to coach a rather un known college for a brief time. And this will be that story of Sid Gilman's one month coaching tenure at United States International University. But before I get into this rather interesting and forgotten story, make sure as always you subscribe to the channel below, ring the bell so you get updates on brand new videos. If you haven't already, please like this video, like this channel, and share this channel with other college football fans. And of course, you can help out my channel on my Patreon. The link is in the description below. And you can also check out my podcast. The link is also in the description below. So I mentioned a rather short overview of Sid Gilman's Hall of Fame career because otherwise this video would be an hour long. It was short because this story is more about how Sid Gilman came to and shortly coached the team at United States International University. Now before I get into that, I gotta go over the university a little bit. Because if you don't know about USIU, don't worry, not a lot of people do either but they were formed in 1924. It was originally a law school and it was actually San Diego's first law school. It would later add other courses and change its name several times as it was known as Balboa University and Cal Western up to 1968 when it became United States International University. The reason for that long name change was because the school moved to a new campus in San Diego and would also add other campuses in Colorado and Hawaii. As the school continued to add campuses, it added students from all over the country and also the world. And with this, it also improved its ability to field more sports teams. And hopefully those sports teams would gain some press for this rather small university. I say that because USIU had men's and women's basketball teams, and it also had a men's ice hockey team, which was very crazy at the time. But along with those teams, the school also had a football team as early as 1958. The school would be able to schedule mostly smaller colleges and junior colleges from all over California, and actually had some winning seasons in the 1960s and early 1970s. But the school seemed to have problems with keeping coaches on board. This might be because of the money, as several football coaches were part-time coaches and worked somewhere else or maybe even coached somewhere else, along with also coaching at USIU. One thing that made the school interesting was that they could recruit athletes and students from all over the world. As at this point in the late 1970s, USIU had 3,400 students or so in the San Diego area with about 1,500 undergraduate, about a third of them being foreign. Now, not to say that this was a big positive for an American football team, as many people around the world don't play American football, but it gives them an upper hand that other schools their size didn't have because again, they could recruit pretty much anyone to come in. And here's where Sid Gilman comes into play, because in 1978, USIU was looking for another football coach, and they weren't really looking to get another high school coach like they had the previous two times. They were looking for a guy with maybe some college football coaching experience. So when the task was given to their athletic director at this time, Al Palmito, he got a rather curious name suggested to him in Sid Gilman. I say very curious because obviously Gilman hadn't coached college in quite a while. Also, he was unemployed at this point after he coached a year with the Chicago Bears in 1977, and many thought after he left the team, he would be retired forever. But according to Al Palmito, it was actually the president of USIU who told him to call Gilman and see if he was interested in coming back to coach college. Now, Palmito really didn't have a good pitch to the coach, as he was practically laughing on the phone when he was talking to Sid Gilman, because I mean, this was Sid Gilman, the father of modern American football. I don't think he would be interested in college coaching, but he said he was. After a rather short interview with Palmito, Gilman said, sure, why not? And that was it. The small, rather unknown school in San Diego just hired one of the legends of football to coach their college football team. 
and as soon as he got there, he got right to work. Gilman started by hiring three assistant coaches, first in Tom Walsh. He was a 29-year-old assistant coach who was a high school football coach the year before at a school about an hour away from San Diego. Gilman also hired John Fox. Yes, the former NFL coach. He 25 years old at this point, and he had coached the year before at his alma mater, San Diego State. And this was going to be his first real coaching job, as he was going to be a defensive back coach. The next assistant coach was another future NFL coach, as Gilman hired Mike Solari, who was also from San Diego State and graduated the same year as Fox, and he was going to coach the offensive line. One final assistant to mention was going to be their offensive coordinator. His name was Mike Shepard, who was the senior coach compared to the others I mentioned, but he was also under 30 years old at this point too. Shepard was at least an assistant for the last four years before this, as he most recently coached at BYU. So Shepard had the most tenure compared to everyone else, and if you don't know, Mike Shepard would end up coaching for New Mexico in the 1980s and 90s. The hiring of these guys and the recruiting of the team was a crazy time, according to Walsh, who said Sid put everything together in about a month. It was frantic. We were interviewing people in two offices at once, running them in and out. Everyone wanted to come in and meet Sid. The frantic hiring and recruiting process allowed USIU to also find some diamonds in the rough, as they found quarterback Bob Gagliano. He was reading gas meters at this point for the city of Glendale, California, and many of the coaching staff knew of his talent, as he played at Glendale's community college and was also set to play at Southwestern Louisiana but he would leave the school before he even played because he was homesick. Gagliano would end up playing in the NFL and professionally for 17 years. So yeah, quite the diamond in the rough they found for this 1979 season to play for them. Along with him, the coaching staff also found defensive back Vernon Dean, who would end up playing in the NFL and is actually still coaching as of 2023. With the team coming together and the staff already there, it was looking like USIU could make some headlines. They were an independent Division II school, so they wouldn't be on TV at all, except for maybe some local appearances on the news. But with the hiring of Gilman, a lot of people were interested to see if the great football mind could do something in college again. Unfortunately though, Gilman would never be able to be on the sidelines for this team. It wasn't anything health-wise, it was actually that Gilman was called by the NFL again. And by one of the best at this time, and also this guy was part of Gilman's coaching tree, in Dick Vermeil. Vermeil was coaching the Philadelphia Eagles, and looking for Gilman to improve the passing attack, like he did at Chicago the year before. Gilman would leave after only four months in San Diego, but his time at this small school was rather unknown. But it's legendary, as he was able to hire four future coaches, two of which would win Super Bowls, and two players that played in the NFL. But how did USIU football do in 1979 now that Gilman was gone? The new coach would be Tom Walsh, who would be 30 by the time the season started, and he would lead USIU to an 8-3 record, tying the best record in school history. Even with the legendary offseason and good 1979 season, it would be the last United States International announced that they would be ending the football program. This might be due to financial issues, as the NCAA went through huge changes in the mid-1970s, as they were now down to three divisions that we know of now, actually four divisions, because there's Division I, FBS, FCS, and then Division II and Division III. So with those divisions now and the 1980s about to start, schools really had to make decisions if they wanted to fund a football program with no scholarships or some or all scholarships. It was really hard to do that for some schools, especially schools as small as USIU was. United States International probably could have afforded a football team for maybe two or three years, maybe at the Division II level. They maybe could have afforded Division I. It would have been really hard for them, though, because a a lot of schools in their area were either getting rid of football teams or dropping their football teams down to the club or the non-scholarship Division III level because it was just too costly for these schools to have a football team with all scholarships was known in the 1980s and 90s to have some pretty good sports teams. Like I mentioned, their ice hockey team, they were the first Division I program in all of California. 
but it also forced them to travel long distances to play other teams, pushing them to end that ice hockey program as well, because again, it was too costly for them to travel thousands of miles to play ice hockey. Their basketball team would also make headlines in the 1990s, as they had some of the highest scoring teams in the country, and they also had the highest scorer in all of college for a year in 1990-1991, as Kevin Bradshaw scored over 37 points per game. It got them a lot of headlines, but it didn't help the school survive very much longer, as in 2001, it merged with the California School of Professional Psychology to form Alliant International University. But this short and rather unknown story of Sid Gilman's time at the school is one that I wanted to share with you because not many people know about it, and Gilman seemed to have a great time in his short time back at college in the late 1970s. Thank you so much for hanging out with me on this short story of Sid Gilman's time back at college. Again, if you are not already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe below, ring the bell, share this channel with other college football fans, and of course, help out the channel on my Patreon. Link is in the description below.